<laughs> good morning or good evening. Um, we're gonna do a little uh, chat video with someone who is in New York and um, who has been inspired by the fridge story and want to share with us what she's doing. So she gonna join us. I'm gonna see if she requested. And like this, we gonna start our little discussion and with a surprise. <laughs> I also launched uh, badges if you want to um, collaborate with, uh, you know, to help the orphanage um, with badges could be really nice. Uh, I must say that today I'm a little bit uh, spaced out. It's like, I don't know if it's because it's this 8-8 eight, eight and uh, with very specific um, astrologic aspect I posted about that but I feel it's working in my head since yesterday so I'm like uh, I need time sometimes to react <laughs> it's really weird I'm not used to be like that but voila so let's see if Shannon is here no uh, let's see invite um, I'm really not good I invited I'm good when people request uh, <laughs> no uh, hey. it could be nice if you request to be online with me Ooh, I don't see the request. Okay, I'm gonna try again. No, 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 no. So, what is going on? No, I cannot see. Oh, I'm very bad, you know, and today it's not connecting in that. It's really weird. <laughs> I cannot believe I'm like that. I cannot believe it. Let me check something. I'm going to try to see if I see better on my iPad. So I wonder how is your Sunday so far? This morning was a farmer's market for me and in fact it is um, the video we're gonna do if we succeed in connecting is uh, about a farmer's market it's about veggies it's about fruits it's about all these things that we do to feed ourselves properly and um, let me try again because I think it's the first time that Shannon is doing that. So I am trying to found that to invite my son. And magic, magic is coming. Yes! <laughs> You know, today, I'm like, Hi. things are not connecting in my brain. <laughs> it wasn't letting me on. Hi. <laughs> I'm so happy to be here. Yeah, yeah. I'm happy to see you finally. And I was like, I was missing a letter in the request. You know, I was putting D, Y, D, Y. I said, something is no wrong. No problem. <laughs> We're here now. It's good to see you. Yeah, me too. So I would love that. Uh, you introduce yourself, sure, and uh, and why we in fact decided to do this video that is like you know Sunday thing is farmers market and all that you know. It's a great day to eat healthy. Sunday is a great day to reset, to set your intention for the week, and figure out 
you know, how you want to set yourself up for success. Yeah. So my name's Shannon. Um, my husband and I have an Instagram account called That DIY Couple. DIY stands for do it yourself. And we talk about things like weight loss, healthy eating. You are also on YouTube. Yeah, we're on YouTube too. We have yeah. a channel there. Um, the, the short story is that my husband and I both lost about 100 pounds, 100 pounds each by changing the way that we eat. And um, we impressive. Of, yeah, it's very we had, impressive. We had a lot of symptoms, um, a lot of fatigue, a lot of just aches and pains, depression. Um, I had PCOS, which is polycystic ovarian um, issues. Uh, we had all sorts of things. I was a pre-diabetic, all sorts of um, problems with insulin resistance and things like that. And we just felt like not well in our bodies. Um, and then we, we made a shift. We started eating more fruits, more vegetables, less processed food. We cut out sugar, we cut out flour. For a period of time, we cut out all animal products, but we've since reintroduced things like fish and eggs. Um, and even sometimes like if the moment strikes, we might eat some meat, if it's like grass fed and things like that. But um, that's not often for us, but mostly we just eat lots of fruits and vegetables and whole <laughs> grains and no sugar, no flour has been pretty essential for me at least. My husband eats flour. But um, we feel so good and we've lost so much weight. And um... I, saw, I saw the pictures <laughs> before, after. I don't know if you have them ready somewhere to show, but yeah, it's impressive. I, I, I don't know if I can do it. Oh, let's on. see. Maybe, maybe I have in my iPad, if I can check, maybe in, uh, if you send them to me. If you go to my Instagram, that's oh, yeah, here, here I have it. You can I have it I just here. put a bunch of new ones just to sort of have them at the top of the feed if anyone wants to see yeah uh, and then we have a the, one of the more popular videos on our youtube channel that diy couple is a video which shows a lot of our before and after picture there you go hey, all right, why, why? <laughs> this is one amazing so one of those things that like i was embarrassed about that photo and i was glad that no didn't this is good it. because this shows because often we see this in ads but we don't know the person but this is real yeah. It's not something made up. It's real. And, uh, I, I'm, and when I see both of you as well, it's really, really impressive. You know, and, I, uh, I, I, at that time in my life, I was so sad about my appearance that I deleted most of my um, photos. There you go. There you see John, too. Yeah. Um, but I'm glad now that I look back and I can see how far we've come. John, uh, is that we cannot recognize John. <laughs> Unbelievable. It's impossible to recognize him. It's not the same person at all from that. Yeah. To that. Yeah. And we both, I think the big key is that we both feel so much happier and healthier and feel like we've added years to our life. And I think it's important to note that I had tried all these diets throughout my entire life. And so had John and I had run a marathon while I was heavy. I exercised a lot and I would exercise and lose a little bit but until I focused on my food until I focused yeah. on changing the things that I put into my body yeah I wasn't able to lose weight and in the period that I lost the 100 pounds I did not exercise at all I maybe took a walk but I didn't run like I used yeah, to yeah because it like this you did not overload your body in processing also the oxidation that we get when we exercise you got it yeah, and I think it's important to recognize that exercise is important for like your health and your wellness and your and your living your best life. But it's actually not that effective at losing weight. Yeah, I think that resting is important. Yeah, right. changing the diet it makes sense when you take fruits and vegetables. There is no fat in that, yeah. and fat is not bad. But it's not the fat of the processed food, you know, mixed with sugar, mixed with flour, mixed with that. But when there is this fluidity of the veggies and the fruits, it's easier for the body. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And only walking. Yeah. That's I, think, it. I think for me, it was important to realize that 
sugar and flour for me have an addictive tendency. So I, I think it's important, it was important for me to frame the idea that anything can be addictive and that we all have different dispositions. So for sure. some, one person might be able to have alcohol casually, like I can drink alcohol casually and I don't have a problem with it. Mm -hmm. Someone else might have one drink and have to drink 20 more and be like an alcoholic. And so I think realizing what you foods you have an issue with, if you struggle with your weight is, is really helpful. And being able to, for me, the, the complete elimination of sugar and flour was essential because it was much, I realized that I was not good with moderation with those two particular items. And there's been all these studies that show that sugar is just as addictive as cocaine, but it's important to keep in mind, people can have cocaine and not be addicted. There are lots of people who eat, can eat sugar and have like half a slice of cake and at the end of the meal be like, I'm full, that's enough. Yeah. Well, yeah. away, many people can have that. But for others, you eat the whole thing and then you go home and you have more sugar, you have more, you know, the next day you're craving it more and more. So for me, that was really essential. And I, it, like, it was hard, it's harder for me to say, I'm just gonna have a little bit of that than to say, that's just not something I eat. And I, I, I think that's like hard for people who struggle with their weight and struggle with like food addiction to get their head around because you associate it with so many life experiences. Um, but what's interesting to know is that as you change what you eat, your taste buds change too. So yeah. now when I eat fresh fruit, it's like my whole, you know, my whole brain lights up because it's so delightfully sweet to me and it tastes you know, na this natural unprocessed sugar for me. Yeah, is yeah. The dessert. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah. This makes a big difference. <laughs> yeah. Huge <laughs> difference. Yeah. 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 Um, so like it's, a, it's, really, uh, uh, it's really an amazing experience. And you had your baby after you started that. Yeah. Yeah. I was able to get pregnant. Um, and we are now expecting another baby. So <laughs> yeah, it was just very, it's very early. So anything could happen. So, you know, I was able to heal my PCOS by losing weight. Um, everyone is healthy and happy. And yeah, life is good. I mean, changing the food that you eat changes your whole vibration. Sure. Yeah. Sure. It's exactly that. It's about the vibration. Yeah. You d when you put even when you put food alive in the body it's immediately alive in your body you know when you put food that is processed and frozen and microwaved and things there is no life it's That's dead right. so you overload the body with all this oxidation and the body is like stocking you know not able to process properly sugar is like gluing it's like a glue inside yes. the cells cannot communicate cannot take change in between them it's like stuck there you know and yeah. uh it's it's easy to understand and some people say oh yeah but fruits are bad no they are not bad sure you will not eat like oh, unless you do a cure i remember my grandmother when i was young one of my grandmothers was doing a great uh, cure uh -huh. like diet for like 10 days mm -hmm. and she was eating only grapes mm -hmm. and uh, i remember that i found this and yeah, it's it's depend also where it's coming the grape from. <laughs> you know, it's that. <laughs> yeah, I try to eat organic. I try to limit the use of um, pesticides and things like that. And I know, you know, there's a lot of debate about whether organic is worth it or not. And I think I've realized that with like the GMO stuff and the organic, it's not as much about, for me, the GMOs and how they've changed the plants in like the structure of them, it's more that the reason that they've changed the structure of them is to survive more pesticides. And it's the yeah. pesticides that are really like harmful to us as they build up in our bodies over time. If you think about it, it's like these pesticides are literally designed to kill organic life and we are organic life. <laughs> exactly, exactly. It's a total nonsense, you know, it's, and it's so logical and, and nonsense about our world through nature. I see someone that is saying that uh, more I'm getting older, more I can't handle the same amount of sugar. And this is normal because the hormones balance is changing. Right. And it's like, you know, our bodies by the change of hormonal balance, 
is also showing us a way to take care better of ourselves and to have a longer, you know, healthier life because it's it's really difficult to process. I, I really felt it when I had uh, I went through menopause. Mm. Sugar was really I, I could not, and it's really. Uh, when uh, I was not eating a lot of processed sugar, my body is the same since I can say 40 years ago. I never had these big ups and downs and, you know, maybe one or two pounds or four pounds maximum. But uh, this was really difficult mm. for me to process. I could not have my glass of red wine anymore. For seven years, I was unable to drink a glass of red wine. I was destroyed. And right. sure, no jam, nothing like that. I was just having some fruits, but I could not process the processed sugar. It was impossible. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a great point. And I think it's important to distinguish between processed sugar and natural sugar, right? Because if you have an apple, it has this natural fiber lattice in it that slows the absorption. But if you yeah. take like a gram of sugar, it's just this white powder that your body absorbs you know, very similarly to the way that it absorbs like almost like a drug and it lights up all the dopamine and the reward centers in your brain. And it's taken up by your system very quickly, your insulin shoots up. And what happens in our, you know, sort of standard Western diet is that we are just eating sugar all day long. And it's hitting our insulin, insulin system so hard that our insulin receptors become, you know, desensitized to it and we have we develop insulin resistance yeah and that does is it causes um leptin which is the hormone that's supposed to signal to your brain hi i'm i'm done eating I yeah have enough i feel satisfied leptin is blocked actually at the brain stem by the excess insulin that we have in our vet so when people are overweight it can be hard if you've never struggled with your weight it can be hard to understand this but i remember when i was overweight that i was constantly hungry ravenous i couldn't stop eating and it's because my body is never getting that signal from the leptin to say you're full go move your body do something else i was never at the end of a meal able to say i'm satisfied wow. enough, enough. until i eliminated all the excess sugar which was keeping my insulin so high and i gave myself defined meal times where i say i'm gonna have breakfast now and then I'm going to wait three or four hours and then I'm going to have lunch because that allows the insulin to go up and then it comes down. And when the insulin comes down, leptin can come out and your brain can recognize it and say, now you're satisfied. Yeah. It was, it was empowering for me to realize when I was so heavy that my hormones were off and my hunger was actually <laughs> wrong. It was not, my hunger was not an emergency because I had a hundred pounds of fat on my body. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't going to starve if I missed yeah. eating every two hours. <laughs> yeah, was, it's, it's a kind of paradox, huh? Right. Yeah. To recognize that I'm feeling very hungry, but it's an illusion. It's an illusion because I haven't given my body a chance to rest. And if I power through and breathe and go outside and take a walk and do something else to feel good, other than like eating my feelings because I'm sad or distressed or whatever, my body will start to heal and I can use some of those extra stores in my body, which it saved for just this occasion yes. to keep me, keep me going. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a fabulous journey that you've been for together in plus. This is really, really amazing. And it's, when you think about it, it's very simple. It's simple. It's not... I mean, it's simple, but I think when you're, when you're heavy, Sometimes it feels... Oh, it's so it seems... It, I'm, I'm sure it's like, like being, you know, in front of Mount Everest. And my goodness, I cannot do this climb. You know, it's like something that must be terrible. But the, it's important to remember that the journey of, um, you know, a thousand miles begins with a single step, right? And I think for me, just focusing on the food and saying, I'm going to put the exercise away I'm going to take extra good care of myself. I'm going to go get a massage. I'm going yeah. to do therapy to deal with my mental health. I'm going to watch movies to relax at night. I'm going to be gentle to myself. Yeah. And just try to get this one thing right was really helpful for me. Yeah, but this is very important. You said it, to be gentle with yourself. 
to don't try to take this from all front and be violent because this is very difficult to deal with. If you start to exercise too much, to change the food, to mm -hmm. don't, you know, allow yourself to don't do anything, you know, it's, uh, it's very difficult. It's, because so often we start, like, we, we start the new year and we're like, now I'm going to do all the things. Here are my 10 yeah. resolutions. I'm going to wake up at 5 a.m. I'm going to meditate for 30 minutes. I'm going to do for two hours of running. I'm going to, you know, and it's too much because we'll yeah. do it for three or four days. But I think if we can keep small promises to ourselves, yeah, like just do this one thing every day. Let's start, let's start breakfast. Instead of my sugared cereal this week, I'm going to try to have oatmeal. Next week, we can, if we can do that for three weeks, that's good. If next week, instead of, you know, the pasta at lunch, I'm going to have quinoa. Those little yeah. sucks, it's, it's so, it makes such a difference. And over time, if you can just get like 1% better every week, you're going to see a huge increase in their health. Yeah, and after the body is asking, you feel you have this intuitive uh, thing that is going on inside because, because the body is going to direct you towards the food you, it needs at that moment. So it's, it's also uh, amazing, you know, I was speaking with a friend recently who came to visit, this craving of anchovies, <laughs> it's like, you know, and it's like, how? Oh. And, and after I forgot them for weeks, mm. but suddenly I'm like craving them, you know, and it's, uh, it's so pleasurable to have them. With bread and butter, I take some flour, I don't know, but... Uh, yeah, just... so I think, I think it's important to recognize that, like a key difference between us is you've never struggled with your weight in your life and your body is very aligned. You've taken very good care of yourself your entire life. And so you can trust your instincts. If you're yeah. anchovies, it's because your body needs something in them. Yeah. And if I'm craving anchovies at this point, probably the same. If I'm craving chocolate cake, I don't think my body needs that. <laughs> no, but maybe you <laughs> crave chocolate. Right, like the dark cacao. The real one. Yeah. Or the one you make yourself. You yeah, know? yeah. I have I have a hundred percent no sugar added cacao every day. It's super Yeah. Good. Yeah. Have, and me yeah. it's the same with chocolate. I can have it every day, several pieces a day, and suddenly I forget about it. Right. Right. But I make my own, you know, and I <laughs> you know, it's like but I never felt guilty to have three, four, five pieces of chocolate one day. <laughs> yeah. I think it's important not to, I think there's a lot of shame um, around food, particularly for people who struggle with their weight. And I think it's really important to be gentle and kind and love your body wherever you yeah. are in your, in your life and whatever shape you are. It's important to thank your body for carrying you on this journey. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. It's bad because, uh, the body is very happy when we recognize its ability to care and to work properly and we share his shit and we thank him and he's like, he's recognized and so he's working better and better because we bring this love to that amazing organism. It's, it's fabulous when you think about, you know. And it's like a pet. You have a pet, you never pet the pet or you never speak to it or you have no nice feeling it's gonna be like miserable but i've got a pet these two pups they're just going crazy here. <laughs> but if you speak to them and they are happy and you know they are like like that and they follow you and they wait you pet them and you know they come and they request and and it's the same for the body the body is like I, can, I would not say a pet, but for me, it's like a pet. When, when you take care of it, of him, me, I say him because in French, body is masculine, mm -hmm. you know? Some people ask me, why do you say him? Uh, because, and you are a woman, because in France, the language is un, un corps, one body, it's masculine. So I say him. <laughs> Voila. Yeah, and towards the end of my weight loss journey, as I incorporated exercise back in to feel and look my best, I, I um, you know, shifting my mindset from thinking about running or moving or dancing or working out, lifting weights, whatever, as something I have to do in order to look good for other people. Yeah. Instead, to something that I get to do to celebrate the wonderful capacity of this vessel that I'm in 
yeah. has been a fundamental yeah. mindset and I look forward to working out now. And this is a total uh, different mindset when you do it for the exterior and when you do it because it feels good and you know you, you really do something good to your body. It's totally different, you know. And uh, me, it's the same. You follow me and a lot of people follow. I don't do a lot of exercise. I just, I, it's random. Like someone asked me to do a video about what I eat in a day. I cannot do a video about that because I never know. I eat what I feel to eat. It can be, sometimes I don't have breakfast. My first meal is at noon. And my first meal can be fish and veggies or it can be fruit so I, I don't I never know and the evening sometimes I take just a tea because I don't feel to it why are I gonna eat if I don't feel to it you know or sometimes I'm gonna take a big salad yeah. or, or it's rare that I eat pasta and rice this is true and potatoes I forget about them I love them but I forget maybe because my body doesn't need because I prefer to have all these greens Mm. And these greens are fulfilling my body. So I, it's rare that I said, oh, okay, I'm going to do a, a pasta. This morning, I, I took this uh, radish. Uh, they are really nice. And I said, oh, the leaves, the, the insects eat all the leaves because they are organic, you know. And they are so beautiful. It's like laces. So I decided this evening I'm going to do a soup with sweet potato from the farmer's garden uh, farmer's market and uh, the leaves of the radish and I did that in the past it's really good you know so I'm excited I prepare everything and this evening I'm gonna have this soup and uh, now when we finish I'm gonna have a piece of fish mm -hmm. and with some mushrooms you see it's just what is coming to my my desire in the moment i don't know sometimes i say okay i'm gonna do that and suddenly i see a tomato and I say oh, oh no i'm gonna do a tomato salad <laughs> you know? so it's i i don't have rules because also not unless like you 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 really discipline yourself at the beginning of your process to don't have food for three four hours to feel when it's you know <laughs> Me, I don't have to do that. So, to, yeah, intuitive it works for you because your body is so in sync with itself, and your hormones are not out of out of working. That you can you can trust your body. You can yeah. trust the signals it sends to you, and I think that's such a beautiful thing. And I think we can all get there. Sometimes it requires, I think, a little while to get ourselves down to a healthy weight and get ourselves into some healthy eating patterns for our body to adjust to you know, send us the right signals when we, uh, like, yeah. true hunger is like, when you feel truly hungry, it's like, it's different than when you feel this sort of insatiable it's, hunger, because your body is yeah. used to all this insulin. I thought, it's I think a, you can look though, for your, for your food. I did a good job figuring out what you eat by just looking at your stories on Instagram, because you often upload what you're eating. Yeah. And you have the uh, Vitalizur like story highlight where you yeah. can go and you can see all sorts of things you've been eating for weeks and you see all the veggies that you eat all the yeah food. yeah and my my because people ask me are you vegan i'm not i i don't i have no label you know mm -hmm. and I, i'm not eating like you very rarely some meat very well chosen when my body craves it right but uh, i in the farmer's market we have the chance to have a very good little uh, butcher that is here with very very selected meat and uh, but it's rare it's very very rare but i don't feel guilty when i have it i enjoy it i'm thankful you know and uh, it is um my i love veggies i really love vegetable and fruits for sure. I mm. think this is really, and nuts, um, olives, all these things are, for me, they are full, fulfilling, you know, it's not, mm. and I love them as less processed as possible. It's for that the vitalizer is great because it steam very fast, keeps the properties and keeps the beautiful color and taste of the veggies. And sometimes I heard one at your recommendation, and I love it too. It's fantastic. Yeah, it is. 
uh, can you imagine? It's a whole life with that tool. Like 1987, I bought them. So it's a long time. And uh, it, it really helps uh, to go to more simple food because it's, it quick, it's cooked very fast. And, uh, and I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> and you, you've been beyond all that because you have your our child. Yeah, I'll show you here. So oh, yeah. my home, there's my other dog. Um, <laughs> there's a cat. We have too many animals. So you can see here in my kitchen. So I have yeah. some fresh tomatoes and apples and onions there and herbs and spices and nuts and whole grains. There's oh, yeah. yeah. I'll show you this first. This is all the like fresh, unprocessed type food that we like. These are some vitamins I take in my oatmeal, things yeah. like that. And over here we have a, this is actually a commercial fridge. Oh commercial yeah. Fridge, all in on meal prep. So here we have um, strawberries and these are other berries. It's the end of the week. I usually have all the way back this whole thing full of berries. Here we have eggs. This is yes. whole grain rice and chickpeas for the week. Uh -huh. These are carrots and these are all from my garden, celery and jalapenos. These are cucumbers from my garden and a pumpkin soup from my garden. Yeah. yeah. Some celery and uh, corn from my garden, cucumbers, oranges. And then down here I have like fancy dog food and stuff for my yeah. husband. <laughs> Um, but for me, meal prep has been essential because I'm a lawyer, I'm a busy mom. Yeah. And so prepping ahead of time, the whole food for the week has been yeah. Really, yeah. Really, really key. And I'll show you out here the garden. Wow, it's so, fantastic. Here's the, wow. the current work in progress is to do to finish up there. But we've added yeah. terraces here. Yeah. Here we're growing. Um, this is my herbs. So I drink mint tea directly from the mint plant here. Yes. And I cook with this thyme and dill. And then it continues along here. Yeah. You can see this is, um, this is a baby watermelon growing on the vine here. And wow. here we have squash growing. Yeah. Um, over here we have blackberries and lemons. And this is chard and corn. These are raspberries. Yeah. Here we have uh, all sorts of. Oh, different types. we lose uh, the connection the because this is. Um, we lose. The... Sorry, we ahead. lose the connection here. We Ooh. lose the connection. Can you yeah. see me now? Yeah, I see you. <laughs> here we have strawberries and okra yeah. and flowers and tomatoes. This is a uh, eggplant down here. Wow. Um, it's fantastic. Over here we have, these are like an Asian variety yeah. of, of long beans. These are a bean uh -huh. that you can saute. Oh, I know these. Yes, they are beautiful. And they're, these are yeah. Great. Yeah. These are, this is okra down here. And these are apple trees over here. Uh huh. These are um, shiseito peppers. I, I eat these all summer. These are so good. And then up here we have more eggplant and more apple trees and peach trees and persimmon trees and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this is our kind of big passion is like growing food that we can go outside in the morning and take it and have a smoothie directly from there because it's just yeah feels so good to put this clean wonderful stuff in your body yeah, it's beautiful. And I'm sure the little one will be happy to contribute and to, you know, to work in the garden with you. And it's yeah. fantastic for kids to see, you know, veggies growing or fruits or picking the fruits. And it's really, really amazing. And you have that in the city. Yeah, well, close to the city. I live yeah. in North Jersey near, near New York City. I work in New York City, but it's been a while since I've been in, since we have the pandemic. Yeah. Yeah, I, I wanted to also pause on something that you said, Yasmina, that I've heard you say before about your eating that I think is really important. You said that you often don't eat until noon. And I've heard you say that multiple videos. Sometimes, yes. Yeah, because I'm taken in my zone of the morning. I take my shower. I watch my email on my stand bike, home stand bike. 
after that I do my yoga after yeah. I answer to some other emails in between I have a herb tea like a mint or any kind of herb tea and it's already 11 in the morning yeah so I the time I prepare something it's my first meal yeah I think that what you're doing and without calling it that is you're doing intermittent fasting, which is something that's been really helpful for me too in weight loss. Like when we talk about eating, you know, the insulin goes up and then it has to come down. And then the longer it stays down, the more your body can use all the glucose yeah. that it's stored from the previous day. And I think that this is probably a practice that you've had throughout your life, which has really helped you stay slender because you're giving your body, if you eat in the evening, and then you sleep, and then you spend a couple hours before you break your fast, you're really giving your body a chance to recover. Because digestion yes. takes a long time, and it's very difficult for your body. Yeah, because it's, it's bad. For example, uh, it was yesterday. Yesterday evening, I had no dinner. I had, didn't feel to, to have dinner. I just had an herb tea and a small piece of grapes, you know. Mm -hmm. And this morning, I had to have a bite earlier it's it's normal you know i i don't even calculate about that but before going to market i had a grapefruit with some i had this at the farmer's market we have fresh spirulina so mm -hmm. i had that a grapefruit smoothie with fresh spirulina and uh, an herb tea and for me it was already f this is already some food you know and yeah. I came back from the market and I make my coffee, but I love coffee, <laughs> with uh, a little, um, a little uh, kind of scone they do at the farmer's market, very good, with blueberry. And uh, now I think in a couple of hours, I'm going to have my fish and maybe this evening late, I'm going to have this soup or maybe not, or maybe I will have it for breakfast tomorrow. Not to make a soup, it's like 10 minutes. It's not complicated. It's very fast. So I will, I follow the flow, what I feel. I really don't. Uh, and also because now I'm, I'm alone, I'm single. So I live totally at my rhythm. When you have a family, like when I have children, I, uh, my day was rhythm by the school, out of school, and the meal for the kids. And now it's not anymore. So I, I can do with what I feel, you know, what I want when I want. So it's another kind of organization. Mm. That's wonderful. I'm, I mean, I feel like you have figured out exactly what works for you. And I think that's the really important thing is that to recognize that everybody's body is different. Yeah. And so I might feel really good not eating meat. Somebody else might feel terrible and might yeah. need more and maybe they have a different level way of absorbing iron than I do it's it's important to as we honor our bodies think critically like is is just ask yourself is what I'm doing now working for me you know it's 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 the best thing it's the best gift you can give yourself exactly I have two friends who were totally vegan for several years mm -hmm. and um, they one of them has been in a very serious condition but her uh, organs were eating themselves Oof. so uh -huh. after seven years of um, vegan being vegan yeah. and she didn't want she has many animals she didn't want to eat animals but she has been obliged to go back on a more various uh, food and yeah. she said it makes a huge difference the other one she had hip surgery she was vegan she's uh, um, uh, how would you say a trainer for uh, fitness mm -hmm. but very like pilates and all that yeah. and she was yeah. vegan and she now she realized that this was not for her so she take bone broth and not eating a lot of meat but she started to do chicken soup and this kind of thing mm -hmm. and she said i can feel the difference you know it's so great that she's honoring her body yeah that's I true. think this is important, you know, and uh, the source of what we take is very important. And, and also the mindset we have regarding that and the spirit we have, the gratitude we have is very important as well. Because yeah, if we feel guilty, we poison our body with psychic toxins, you know. I think people get um, really holier than thou when they talk about their diets, right? And we have like 
the vegans and the carnivore and the keto and the paleo and the intuitive eaters and we have all <laughs> these people carry these flags like yeah like, like politics or religion yeah and exactly so passionate about this like, one thing and I think the simple reality is that nobody freaking knows what the very best diet is for humans yeah. and probably considering that there are people who lived in the arctic only eating like whale blubber and other people who lived in the jungle eating totally different things humans can eat a variety of different foods and it probably depends a lot on what's going on in your body and the climate you're in and what's in season and i mean i think that what's important to keep in mind is how do i feel when i put these things into my body and act accordingly right yeah yeah and and when you go also towards um, the energy of food uh you have the food that is more calming that is more yin like white rice for example that bring more yin to the body so if you're inflammation or if you are really like agitated this is a food that's gonna bring some quietness but you have food that going to do the contrary, that are very young. And uh, for example, red meat. So mm -hmm. it depends the balance you need as well for your energy, mm -hmm. uh, vibration. It's, uh, it's, it's complex, but it's very interesting to uh, investigate in what, uh, in what we don't know about it. Because we can discover things, it can resonate with us. Oh, I didn't thought about that. And now we have the internet. We have no excuse to don't look for information. So when something can bother us about food, we just go and check and make research and read and feel, oh, this makes sense. No, this for me doesn't make sense because me, I'm like that. You know, it's like... It's not to take everything for granted or everything is right. It's not about that. It's, it's about we have a kind of amazing tool that is like a sensor. Our body is a sensual body. You know, we have the senses. And uh, when an information is passing by, if we are here present, we can feel how it resonates. Mm. If it makes us feeling lighter and happier and you know good or something is heavy mm. and so like this with me i know like that mm -mm. Uh, sometimes you know i am in a rarely in a, a supermarket just to take you know oil flour I even no oil i take at the market but basic coffee or things like that and i'm tempted by uh, maybe a box of uh, candy or thing Mm. I take it, I feel bad. I, I feel, you know, like, oh, so I love the, the idea of this fruit candy, but something is not passing. Something, mm. so I let it without regrets, you know, and, uh, and I'm going to go on a piece of chocolate. <laughs> I think that's such a beautiful thing about you is that you are so in tune. You're like a very finely... Your, the, the barometer or whatever, of, you know, how you're feeling, you, you listen to your body and your mind and you give yourself that grace to take your feelings seriously. And I think part of my problem when I was heavy was that I was having lots of stress and having lots of anxiety with my work and becoming a lawyer and busy and deadlines and, you know, money concerns and things like that. I was paying back a lot of student debt and things like that. And so instead of looking at those emotions and examining them and thinking, what do I need to do? I need to get better about money. I need to set a budget. I need to, you know, do, do the thing that's on my computer that I've been meaning to do for my boss for two days, but haven't started yet. Instead of turning to my problems and doing something about them, I was turning to food to feel better. Yeah. And it's important to listen to your body and honor your emotions and take the proper action based on how you're feeling instead of just the feel to, to, to eat to avoid how you feel, if that makes sense. Yeah, oh yeah, sure. And uh, yeah, often it's emotional disorder. Mm. You know, eating is, for some people, it's a lack of 
being uh, feeling loved. Uh, sugar is often related to that. Um, and yeah, how, and it's a, it's a great how feeling. How yeah, yeah, it's that. Life. Say, it's a great feeling. I know you're scared right now. I know you're stressed. I know you're ever, but you don't have to do this. You can, you can take the adult action to take care of yourself. You don't have to, you know, eat. Like yeah, but you know, healthy. Shannon, when you have not been educated in that way, when you have not been taught about that, it's difficult to find by ourselves. So what we do, I think it's what we do when, when we have trouble in the body, any kind of trouble. It's in a fact, me, for me now, I'm inverting the phenomenon. I have the feeling that it's my soul that uses my body to attract me on something specific hmm. to investigate that and to discover something deeper. And it's like an amazing exchange in between this invisible part of myself and the one I can, you know, it's like this is there, it can be imprinted in my body. And my body is gonna focus on the part uh, of my body for me to put attention there, for me to look for what can I do, uh, what can I, how I can help that, how I, it's what I did recently, I told you, you saw it with, um, little inconvenience of incontinence that I started to have. But I discovered so much more just by really investigating, looking for, exercising at my own way. Like things that I was feeling to do in the, in the moment. And now I am on another step. Now I so want to reach this pleasant, ecstatic state that I got at the beginning without searching because I didn't know. But my mental is on that and it's more difficult now to reach that state. Hmm. So I have now to double work to put my mental really on something else to don't expect anything. The thing is that to do things without expectation without, you know, practicing the exercise to tonify the, the muscles, but not expecting the ecstasy I got some weeks ago that was like, I want to stay there. I don't want to get out. And now it's another phase where it's difficult to get there because my mental knows, I know how it is, and I'm in a way impatient to be there without doing the exercise. <laughs> it's like crazy, but I'm observing this. I say, wow. This morning it was clear. I said, okay, it's just because I have an expectation. <laughs> For sure. I think in one of the key things I took away from what you just said, I think implicit in the way you're talking about this is you said, my, my soul is sending my body a message. And what's implicit in that is a separation between who you are as a spiritual being and this vessel that you're in right and you are standing you're able to stand apart and observe what's happening with a curiosity that's very admirable to say what is it that's going on what are the messages that are coming to me now and what should I you're, you're patient as you think through them and I think that that's something that's taught a lot in like eastern religion and meditation and stuff to just think about your thoughts and your feelings not as truths, but as, you know, visitors that are passing through your house, the, through the open front door and out the back door and just, yeah, they're able to sit with your feelings and, you know, consider them and, and take action as a result of that is a really powerful thing in life. Yeah, because this, as you said, it's, you know, we, in the medical field, we say the patient mm -hmm. and it's, it's about that. We are patient. We are, we we have to have this because when it's there in the invisible, it's at speed light. So we can have an idea, but the time that it's, but we can have also uh, instantaneous healing. I had some experiment like that. And inside my body, it's like burning and I know it's done. But 
we have to it's it's difficult because in fact to express that because it's from the invisible side there but it's like there there is an information that is important right there beyond you know the lab beyond the body the physical body but it's a reflection of something that is there and when we go towards a place in the body where there is something going on in fact it's like satisfying a need of the soul mm -hmm. Be just because we put attention and we work on that and we search for and we are curious and we try things and we are patient and uh, I see that these days I lost the patient part <laughs> because I want too much to go to the thing, you know, directly. And uh, it's it's very interesting process. The body is the key. The body is... Uh, we don't come here uh, without it. It's because something. It's, it's, uh, it's about the senses. It's about feeling. It's about... It's fascinating, really, really fascinating. <laughs> it's 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 a beautiful thing, and I and I think that it's wonderful too to recognize that it can go the other way, right? So you can feel a disquiet, a discomfort in your body, and you can, you might have something going on in your mind that you need to actually care for and tenderly love and you know observe and witness and and do something about, but at the same time you might be really up in your own head one day and anxious and, you know, struggling with your racing thoughts or something like that. And you can actually sometimes move your body, go outside, take a walk, move, dance, do yoga or something like that to help release that, you know, mental block as well. Yes. That, that two way connection is so powerful. Yeah. And this can be an indication when we are too much in the head. Mm -hmm. It's because we have to go in the body. And put attention the there. That's the power of the yoga practice that you follow. That's the power of the body brushing where you, it's really grounding. If you look at your video about your rituals with your body brushing and the, the stuff you do to take care for your body and your shower and things like that, you're really grounding yourself with that sensory, you know, thing to take the cold shower. You're waking up the body in a way. Yeah. That, so helpful for the mind yeah because it's sensation a cold shower on the body brings a lot of sensation that's obliged to be down not up there you know it's obliged to do it. it's cold so you feel that and for that time you are not in, it's not there it's there yeah. and uh, and and this is uh, this is the thing what we do in, in sport as well. Uh, we work with the body, we make move in the body and this free, you know, our, our mind. But not only free the mind, it makes us able to get information, to get messages. Because it's not with the big cloud inside of that turning on itself. It just... Ooh, the body is working, moving, everything is flowing, and now, oh, suddenly I have the answer to that, or I'm thinking of that, but I was... Uh-oh. Sorry. Someone, it's birthday today. It's also the birthday of my younger sister today. She's 50 years old today. Wow. Yeah. Eight eight, <laughs> and uh, also I posted a couple of days ago. Uh, there are this astrologic aspect very strong today, so I had the feeling it was for ascension. I was the feeling it was working on my skull, you know, on my bones, and uh, I feel better now. Yeah, so it's nice, huh? to to be able to experiment that in few years because you did that in recently and uh it's it's impressive really so much really. because you. when we started to be in touch i didn't know about that <laughs> i discovered lately i said what <laughs> 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 it's um 
you know, in, in that book, French Women Don't Get Fat, they talk about feeling bien, das, bien dans sa peau, right? Like, bien dans sa peau. Skin. And I feel like it's such a wonderful thing to align your, align your body with the way you feel inside and to feel good in your skin. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and I'm not, you know, uh, virgin of ice cream, for example. I eat them rarely. Or pizza. My, my vice is pepperoni pizza, you know. So this is the worst. But I love it. And sometimes, oh, I have it. I'm very happy. The thing, I think the key when we arrive to a certain balance with our body is to allow ourselves to have these little things. Yeah, and to be happy to have them, you know, to don't feel guilty, to be like, oh, to enjoy them. And last day I had a Aganda ice cream with coffee. And it was like, maybe it was the one of the year, you know, I'm not, I don't remember to had one. Oh my goodness, I passed by with, you know, in the f supermarket, because me supermarket, it's zhuf, zhuf, Speedy Gonzalez, you know, I don't stay. And I passed by the ally and the glass called me the ice cream called me oh, oh yes and i felt yes i take it you know and it was like such a great feeling and i love that you know it's it's not about being frustrated it's about you enjoy even more after i think that's the goal we should all strive for to be able to be so in touch with our bodies that we can that our bodies are sending us these you know true like signals and you know to be able to enjoy something and yeah. then and then have enough right for for me i think with the addiction like realizing that i wasn't like you know people who had never struggled with their weight before i had a much more, I, and i have addiction in my family it's it makes sense that i might have an addictive relationship with food um i real treating it as that and having more rigid rules was very helpful for me but i find that as i grow as a human being and as I address some of my own unresolved traumas in life and I do therapy and I work on myself emotionally and spiritually I'm able to start moving more towards that intuitive eating because I'm, yeah. I'm not responding to life's stressors anymore with a desire to eat unhealthily I'm, in, I'm responding to life's stressors with a desire to address them and food has become of less it has a less addictive pull for me. So I'm working towards being where you are and I hope to get there someday. Oh, you will. <laughs> and uh, without doubt about it, you are already on that, you know, because you are aware of it. When you are aware of it, the biggest thing is done. And after, it's a question of practicing every day. Be patient. <laughs> to be a patient, you know. And, and it's that. It is... Uh, it's a wonderful journey, you know. Uh, when I was younger, I had also some food addiction, if I can say. But because, for example, my family had no money, so we could not have a lot of butter. But me, on the other side of my family, where I was living sometimes with my grandmother, East of France, East of France is known for butter and creme fraiche, you know. And we had that. I had that as much as I wanted. But when I arrived in my parents in Corsica, first, it was difficult to find it. Mm -hmm. And second, we just had a little bit of it. And me, I wanted more. I wanted more. I loved it so much. I could not have it. And when I been married and I've been in my home, you know, a family, I was eating so much better. You have no idea. <laughs> Until I realized, I say, so, okay, now it's time to diminish that because I realized that I was healing that frustrated part when I was younger. Right. So when I realized that, the, the job was done. And, right. I, you know, because I was not aware when I was doing it. But and You've talked about your task a little bit too, about some of the difficulties that you had as a child, you know, being in between Corsica. And, yeah. and I imagine that for baby Yasmina, that was also a big life transition right to leave sure. your home to go somewhere new and so the comfort that that butter in france provided was not just a physical comfort but an emotional comfort yeah. too and oh yeah imagine there was lots of feelings on the return as well and like you know missing that emotional comfort and 
the tr transitions like that are hard for kids. And, and so, you know, it was hard because when I was in Corsica, I was totally immersed in it there. And I loved it. I really loved it. My cold shower is from that time. And it's really where my, my, my body, my, my being, my deep being is there to these roots of Corsica, you know, even if I'm not born there. But when I was going in Besançon, it's of France where I born, but I don't feel I belong to that place. Mm -hmm. I was closed in an apartment. I was not anymore the little girl, wide, free on the beach or mm -hmm. in the, at the river. It was finished. And I was suffering about that. So it was very difficult. So what I did, I was with my grandmother and uh, I bought... Uh, I requested to have fishes, to have turtles. I had a room with all these birds in cages and things because I was quite like recreating the universe I was missing when I was in nature. But I had this food that was that I loved there that I could not have on the other side. You know, it was like so when I was going in Corsica, I had all this nature that I really love, but. I was frustrated to don't have this food that I liked as well, you know. So it's, but we had good food. We had more fresh food, like from the garden that my grandfather was. But I was missing to have this part, the butter. The butter is something like, um, yeah, like soft, you know, like something that brings for me i guess it was bringing reconfort or something like that so now i'm fine i love it i don't eat a lot but i eat some almost every day <laughs> wonderful yeah yeah especially with anchovies oh, it's so good <laughs> you know i i you mentioned anchovies so many times that i started buying i never ate anchovies in my life and now i'm an anchovy addict i like I mean, my, my philosophy has recently become just do whatever Yasmina says. She's pretty <laughs> So I bought all the body scrubs. I bought the, all the stuff. And like, I she's like, I guess I'll try anchovies. And now I, I can't live without them. I, eat them. I know. I have a friend. She came <laughs> home. She had anchovies. Now she's like, which one I can buy? And that I'm craving them. So she has a reserve, you know, stock of anchovies now. And uh, last day she came and I make her discover the cod liver. And she yeah. said, oh, I don't like that. I was obliged to have the cod liver oil. I said, but this is not. You taste it. You see if you like it. She said, wow, this is so good. And she was eating it like that, you know. So I, now well, she's I, after I, the cod liver. I tried it too on your recommendation. And unfortunately, I went to the dogs and they, had, they loved it. But I couldn't eat it. <laughs> I <laughs> love it with uh, red onion and capers and lemon juice and basil. <laughs> On a toast, oh, oh, it's so good. I think I love it. No, I have fish, but I, I'm, you know, and I love sardines, too, so I, I put sardines. Um, I love that with, I can uh, put them, like spread them with butter and onion, or I can just add them with, you know, lemon. And um, I love, last day I did a salad. Instead of tuna, I put sardines. Yeah. Oh, it was absolutely delicious. I love them with rice and hot sauce. With what? With rice and hot sauce. Oh, so, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I'm sure it's good. <laughs> ah, food is so good. <laughs> well, it's great to talk to you. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, it's me. Uh, yeah. it's, I think uh, it was important that you witness about your path on your journey about, you know, uh, losing weight and because yeah. I'm sure there are a lot of people, people struggling with that. And, and it's very important to take this, like, at the psychological level, doing the therapy. Yeah. It's, it's the best thing we can do for ourselves. You know, it's it's fantastic uh, journey, the therapy. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Yeah, Shannon. So everybody's great in the family. <laughs> yeah, all is well. My daughter is playing outside with my dad and uh, my husband and the thousands of animals, the thousands of animals we have here. So. Yeah. <laughs> so enjoy your end of afternoon.
and you thank you thank you very much if anyone has any questions for me you can find me at that diy couple diy and i'm on youtube too and I just yeah i'm gonna put chance. your contact uh in the caption of the video like these people can be in touch with you yeah thank you, thank so you much. very much all right sending you kisses from new jersey all right bye bye yeah. bye 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 bye, bye. bye. Voila, so this was uh, very, um, uh, oh, you have a question? Oh, she's gone. What, what do you want to know? Uh, sure, you can ask a question. And um, it's a very interesting journey that she's been through with her husband. You know, when you see the pictures before, after, it's, it's really, it's impressive. And uh, and now to have her own uh, their their own orchard, it's really really amazing, yeah. So um, thank you for the badges. Thank you very much. And I'm uh, gonna wish you a good end of the day or a good uh, good day because maybe you start the day or you start the week. And uh, very soon with something else. <laughs> Bye bye. I don't see the question, so I think I can. I just look, but there is no question. <laughs> okay, Argentina. Ooh -ooh. <laughs> Hello, yes. Uh, you know this one is the ants. Of the children of the orphanage this one is in silk with all these colors it's beautiful isn't it <laughs> yeah thank you thank you so have a good night in greece bye bye <laughs>